Hello and welcome back to the JCR Garage where today we are installing our upper aluminum quarter panel armor for the JK and JKU. Really excited about these. They come in a few different configurations so check out our website for that. And the steps to install them whether you have a two door or a four door are extremely similar. On the two door you're gonna have a few more bolt holes because this portion wraps down lower around the fender. But either way they're really easy to install. You have to install some nut certs. And I know that that's scary for some people, but it's fine. Uh, we've got some nuts here to install. I'll show you how to do that. Let's get started. So the first step is gonna to be to remove this factory license plate frame. We're gonna remove the license plate with a screwdriver. And then the frame itself with a seven millimeter socket or nut driver, there's two bolts here. Then on the back of this license plate frame is an electrical connector. Push in the button there, pull the connector, and push it through the hole in the tub. Now for the tail light, we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two inside screws. Being careful not to damage this special edition handy corn tail light cover. Very rare. Pull the factory tail light out and then remove the wiring clip and tuck that right inside the quarter panel for now. Now we're going to move this factory gas filler surround. So remove the gas cap and then reach inside here and there's three tabs holding this plastic surround on the quarter panel. And then it just pulls right off. Now using a clamp or a helper, you're gonna to wanna to mock this corner up and there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to be looking for. Uh, one of those is you want this edge here on the back to line up with the edge of the tailgate opening. So that's kind of important. Uh, another thing you wanna watch over here on this other side is you wanna make sure that the gas tank opening is correct. Uh, you wanna watch this line, this body line, all the way across the side here. Then you wanna make sure that this front line here is pretty good. Um, so once you get all of those things lined up and kind of mocked up where you want them, once you get everything lined up kind of the way you want to, the first thing I would do was drill one hole on the back and one hole on the side and install those nut certs. Got a good mark there. And we've got that mark as well. Now I'm gonna pull this corner off and I'm gonna to totally install those two nut certs to help me align all of the other bits. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to step up to a 17 30 second drill. And you really wanna be careful with this big drill bit because it can kind of bite into the sheet metal and tear it up. So just kind of go slow and take your time. So one trick I found why you're drilling with this big 17 30 second bit is to pulse. In the forward direction, just until it's getting ready to cut through. And then to help it from, or to stop it rather, from tearing into the sheet metal, throw the drill in reverse and finish the drill in reverse. It seems to make a cleaner hole and I get a lot less tearing that Then afterwards I like to take either a unit bit or a countersunk bit or even a bigger drill bit and just clean up that hole. Put no rough edges on it. Now it's time to install some nut certs, and I know that nut certs get a bad rap. Some people even call them evil, but I think maybe they're just misunderstood. Uh, so we um, provide a nut cert tool, which is really just a 5 16 inch bolt, two washers, and a larger nut. So it goes together like this. Uh, one washer closest to the head of the bolt, the larger nut, the other washer on the other side. These washers act as bearings. Then I like to put just a little bit of either grease or anti-seize on the threads of this installation tool. And then we take the nutsert and we thread it on. 
And then I like to grab some RTV and coat this nutser in RTV. And what that's gonna do is, when it compresses on the sheet metal of your Jeep, it's gonna create a seal, which is good. It won't let water or anything else get in there. So this is the part that kinda of gets messy, but it's totally worth it. So you take this nutser on the tool and slide it into the hole, the 17 30 seconds hole that you drilled earlier. It could be a little bit snug. That is fine. So I'm going to install it first with a socket wrench, but I usually do it with an impact wrench just because it's easier. But the one thing you have to remember when you're using a socket wrench like this is you don't want to put any force on this nutser um, like in this direction or off from parallel, I guess, with the nutser itself. That's when you'll get an uneven crush. You want to do as much as possible to make sure that you are applying force on this wrench, I guess it would be perpendicular to the nutser itself. Um, if you get all over the place with your force on the wrench, that's when you're gonna get a bad crush. That's why an impact wrench works so well, but you can do it with a regular socket and socket wrench. You're gonna go and start, start to feel some resistance on that. Okay, nice and tight. And then we can back this nut off here. Then we'll wipe the RTV off. Yeah, I know I said it's gonna be messy, but what you're gonna get if you take your time is a really nice even crush on that nutser and then a great seal against the sheet metal of your Jeep. Now we supply you with some little nylon washers to go over these 5 16th button heads and that's just so you don't mar up the finish on these corners. So let's go ahead and install them again using just the two nut certs that we drilled and installed in the last step. So get that one in the back done. These are stainless, so I'm putting a little bit of anti-seize on these. And then we'll install this front one. All right, now once you get this guy bolted up here, you're gonna to wanna to check the fit again and realize that there'll be a few gaps up on this top edge here, maybe on the bottom, and those should come in with additional nut threads. You can take your hand and press it against the body. Realize that there may be some small gaps, some eighth inch gaps, once everything is done, just because of all the different radiuses on the JK, and we just can't make aluminum conform to all of them but most of them should close up really well. So this looks pretty good, so I'm gonna start installing more nut certs. And if you wanna be super careful, just install a couple, keep taking it off and test fitting it, uh, but I think we're pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and drill all these now. And once you get all those rib nuts installed, go ahead and loosely install all the bolts we provided with those nylon washers underneath them. You wanna install them really loose first, just to make sure everything fits okay. And remember, use just a little bit of anti-seize on these threads, so that'll help you if you ever have to remove them for any reason. Once you get all the bolts loosely installed, go ahead and start in the middle and work your way out, tightening down all the button head bolts. Now reinstall your factory gas tank filler surround. And you have some options here. You can either let the factory clips hold it into the quarter panel armor, or if that's not secure enough, we actually supply some quarter inch button heads and you don't have to drill all the way through the surround, the upper quarter panel, and the sheet metal install nuts on the back if that's the route you want to go with. 
but they hold pretty securely without those bolts. It's just an option for you. So once you get all those button head bolts tightened down, this is how it should look once it's done. Go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. So a quick word on installing the passenger side. Since you have these cutouts here for the tailgate hinges, it might be a little harder to line this edge up properly. What might make it easier is if you drill two holes and install two nut certs here on this uppermost bolt here and then down there by lining up this upper body line and then matching that front gap on the rear door. Then what you can do is take this bottom one and push the armor in towards the Jeep and drill this bottom hole here. Then go ahead and pull the armor again and install that nutser. Tighten all three of these down and that should locate the rear corner here for you to drill and install all of those nutserts. So we designed this upper quarter panel armor to work with a couple different tail light options. You could use a grommet mount and a four inch round stop tail turn like a truck light. If you do that, what you're gonna have to do is trim this sheet metal right here. There's this little bit of sheet metal that held on the factory tail light. You're most likely gonna have to trim that out so the grommet and this tail light will fit on there. Another option is to run a surface mount light like these trail tails from our friends at Maxbuilt. And they make a bracket that these bolt to that grab behind the light and then these mount right on there as a surface mount. The nice part about this is it has a side marker light. If you do this style stop tail turn to stay legal in some states, you may have to drill uh, a hole to do a grommet three quarter inch or so side marker light. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to wire these up, but I can give you a couple little tips that are gonna make your life easier. So wiring up either one of these taillights is gonna be a direct wire for wire swap with the positives and the grounds on each individual ball. What I like to do though is I like to sacrifice this taillight and cut this harness off. And that way you can use this harness to wire into either your ground mount stop tail turn or your surface mount. You can wire those in permanently and then you still have an easy way to remove that light if you wanna pull the corner or whatever you wanna do. Remember to look up the specific wiring diagram for whatever tail light you're going to use. And a quick tip is a trailer or a truck tail light is going to have the white wire as a ground and the black wire as either the run light, the stop light, or the tail light. It just kind of depends on the manufacturer. So once you get those tail lights wired in, you might notice that the JK is going to throw a code or a ball bolt warning. And that's because these LEDs are so much less resistant than a standard incandescent bulb. But there's a way to fix it. You want to get one of these 50 watt 6 ohm resistors. Just search the internet, they're everywhere. And they have an aluminum heat sink because they kind of make a lot of heat. And what you're going to do is you're going to wire this in parallel with the stop turn wire, the positive stop turn wire, and the ground. So you're going to have a positive stop turn wire coming through here and going to your light and the ground coming from your light and going through here. And what that's going to do is the computer is going to see a resistance like it's an incandescent bulb. It's going to solve the fast blink problem and it's going to solve any codes. Usually I take these and I mount them up against the sheet metal inside just to promote better cooling. So that's it. Remember to take your time. If you want, install a few nut certs at a time and that'll help you draw that corner around your sheet metal for a really great fit. If you have any questions, any problems, any concerns, do not hesitate to reach out to us via phone or email and we'll get it squared away. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for ordering. Have a great day.